What's up, nerds? It's your boy, the OG GM. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. It's the 29th day of September 2022. It's 70 degrees and sunny here at Site B. I'm drinking RC Cola. Support me, Cola. I will sell out. And speaking of selling out, Wizards of the Coast has generously made the second round of the 1D&D playtest available to us today as of five minutes ago. The expert class Unearth Arcana is now live for us to download, take a look at, and comment on. So, uh, thanks to Dungeons and Diversity for uh, posting a review of Mr. Crawford's review uh, announcement, uh, which I have now taken a look at. And about five seconds ago, the playtest went live on D&D Beyond. Link down below. So, of course, we're going to go through it. So, warning ahead of time, you may hear some sarcasm and perhaps some complaints. And perhaps, oh, goddamn camera, stop shaking. You make me look like I'm in a dot, goddamn earthquake. You may even hear me say some things that are less than positive about 1D&D. So... If you're one of the people who are actually surprised and think all these ideas are good things and don't want to hear anybody say anything less than positive about 1D&D and the future of Dungeons & Dragons and Wizards of the Coast, you should probably stop watching this now because I have a feeling my sarcasm and less than positivity is going to be pretty high in this one. And I need a haircut. I'll give you a minute while I drink this soda. All right, you're still here, which I guess that means you want to hear me go through this playtest and comment on it. It's my first time looking at it, so I have no idea what to expect. Except, of course, um, everything here we're going to see is brand new. And yet, strangely familiar. Everything here we're going to see is inclusive. And yet, strangely not. And everything here we're going to see is going to be completely backwards compatible with 2014 going forward D&D &D, because anything before 2014 doesn't exist as according to Crawford and what we just saw in the interview and yet strangely not all right so first off we have a brand new classing of the classes we have the expert group the expert group group currently includes the bard the ranger and the rogue why are they experts as opposed to before? I don't know. Uh, I guess uh, anybody that hits things with a sword is now a warrior class, I'm going to say. And anybody that does finger waggling are now caster classes, which include the arcane casters, the divine casters, and the utterly pointless primal cat casters. Get rid of that list. Just put arcane and divine. Because everything on the primal list could be also the divine list, in my humble opinion. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the brand new, yet not new, yet strangely familiar, Bard, Ranger, and Rogue classes and how they have changed. We're going to see some changes to feats, some changes to spell lists, some changes to power lists. And before this is over, we're going to receive revised versions of every class and the 50 subclasses including the subclasses of the subclasses. We're also going to see some new revised feats, some new weapon options, a new system for creating a home base for your characters, requires counter building the rules, and new and revised monsters as the part the, the thing. So, um, the, the class groups are experts. Bard, ranger, rogue, mages, sorcerer, warlock, wizard, priests, cleric, druid, paladins, and warriors, barbarian, fighter, and monk. Why not just make mages and priests the same um, group? Experts, casters, warriors. Each class is going to have subclasses. We're going to have a total of 50 subclasses. But probably more. So let's start with the bard. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, uh, yes, the bard. Oh. 
Are bards actually going to be worthy of awesomeness? Or are they going to be the horny uh, idiots that they continue to be the typecast of? Okay, so we have 20 levels of the bard class. Now, we have the proficiency bonus. That hasn't changed. You start at plus two. You get to go up to plus three at fifth level. At first level, bards get bardic inspiration and spell casting. They have something called the bardis, bardic die now. I don't know what that is. I suppose that will be explained. Maybe that's the inspiration dice. Probably. Uh, yeah, it starts at D6 and goes to D8 at 5th. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's the inspiration dice. But maybe now they can do different things with it. They start with two cantrips and one, two first level spells from the I don't know what list. We'll take a look at a second. Um, all right. Hit points are D8. Uh, saving throws are Dexterity and Charisma. Free skills are Deception. Performance are per Persuasion. Or you can take any three skills of your choice that you will be getting your proficiency with. You are uh, able to use simple weapons. Uh, you get the tool proficiency in three different musical instruments. You have light armor training. And you get some free stuff. Like before, uh, you get a free dagger, you get the entertainer's pack, you get the leather armor, you get a free musical instrument of your choice, you get a short sword, and you get 18 gold pieces. Or you can ignore the, all that and just take 100 gold pieces and buy your own stuff. Uh, bard class features. First level, bardic inspiration. This inspiration represents the bardic dice, d6. You can use your um, bardic inspiration in new ways. Boost a d20 test. When another creature within 60 feet of you can see or hear you fails a d20 test, you can use your reaction to give the creature a bardic inspiration dice. The creature rolls the dice and adds the number rolled to the d20. You can also heal people now. You can use your reaction to roll your bardic inspiration dice to restore the number of hit points, blah, blah, blah. You can confer bardic inspiration a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. It regains at long rest. As you go higher levels, that dice becomes a d8 at 5th, a d10 at 10th, and a d12 at 15th. You can cast spells. You have the following spells prepared. Color Spray, Disguise Self, Prestidigitation, and Vicious Mockery. Alternatively, you can prepare two level zero spells and two level first spells from the arcane list. And must be from the Divination, Enchantment, Illusion, or Transformation list. Whenever you take a long rest, you can switch out your spells for another from the same list. Um, so you start the game knowing the color spray, disguise self, and prestidigitation and vicious mockery um, cantrips. But if you don't want to take those, you can also take two first level spells of your choice uh, from the arcane list. Divination, Enchantment, Illusion, and Transformation. After you take your first long rest, you can switch out those cantrips, it sounds like. And as you go up, you can get more spells. At second level, you get exper Expertise. Uh, you get with two skills of your choice. Though we, they we recommend Performance and Persuasion. You can take whatever you want. You also get the Song of Restoration at second level, which allows you to heal people. You always have an extra spell prepared, and it doesn't count against your number of spells. Number of spells you can prepare. At second level, you get healing word. At fourth level, you get lesser restoration. At sixth level, you get mass healing word. At eighth level, you get freedom of movement. Tenth level, you get greater restoration. At third level, you get to choose your subclass. We'll take a look at those at second level. At fourth level, you get the ability ability improvement feat or another feat of your choice. This is one of the things that. Um, Crawford was really excited about that, you know, now at fourth level, you can choose a feat or you can choose the ability improvement score feat. What is the ability improvement score feat? It allows you to add plus two to one ability or plus one to two abilities. Wait, this sounds exactly what we like we could do before. Yes, but now we give you the choice of taking a feat or taking the ability improvement feat, which does the same thing as it did before. But that's what we could do before. 
we we had the option of taking the plus two to one stat or plus one to two stats or taking the feat. Well, no, no, technically you could only take the plus two to two stats and plus one to one stat. Getting the feat was optional. Um, yeah, but everybody since to, has had that option available to us. I mean, you know, we, we all knew it was an option, but, you know, the choice was always there, and I've never once played in a game where anybody said you couldn't do that. And in fact, didn't Tasha's pretty much say you could do that? No, 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 this is the first time we've ever let you make that choice. Now, when you hit fourth level, you can choose to take the ability improvement feat, which does the exact same thing as you could do before, or you could take a feat. But we could always do that, Crawford. Don't, don't, don't you know that? At fifth level, you get the Jack of All Trades ability. You can add half, half your proficiency bonus to any ability trait that uses a skill you lack. So, yeah. So at fifth level, your proficiency thing will be plus three, so basically plus one. So anytime you roll a skill you don't have, you can go add plus one to the roll. Uh, I think you could do this earlier on other bards um yeah couldn't bards start do start taking this at first level old builds um then they gave them that plus one to initiative um i don't know if it still gives you the plus one to initiative at sixth level you gain a sub uh subclass feature at seventh level you get font of bardic inspiration you now regain all your expended uses of bardic inspiration when you finish a short rest instead of a long rest and in addition, if a creature rolls your Bardic Inspiration dice and gets a 1, you can use your Bardic Inspiration. The use of your Bardic Inspiration isn't expanded. All right, so I give you my D8, but if you don't use my if you roll my D8 and it's not and it's a 1, it doesn't count. So I still have the next, that D8 floating around. So, I mean, still an extra 1 to my dice could be all the difference. At 8th level, you can choose the ability improvement score feat or feat. At 9th level, you get another round of expertise. At 10th level, you get a subclass feature. At 11th level, you get a magical secret. Choose a spell from the Arcane, Divine, or Primal list. Whenever you spell, prepare spells for this class, you, you can up to two spells you can prepare from the chosen list from any school of magic. Wait, what? Choose a spell list, Arcane, Divine, or Primal. Whenever you prepare spells for this class, up to two of the spells you prepare can be from the chosen list or from any school of magic. Okay, so now uh, at 11th level, I can now cast divine or primal spells. 19th level, I get a feat. At 12th level, I get a feat. 14th level, I get a sub class feature. 15th level, I get more magical secrets. 16th level, feat. 18th level, superior bardic inspiration. When you roll initiative, you regain two expanded uses of your bardic inspiration. Wow. So every time I roll in, every time a new fleet starts, I get uh, two two bardic inspirations back. Nineteenth level feet, twentieth level epic boon. That's new. Um, now they offer you a suggested list of spells to take when you level. You don't have to take these, but uh, here are some suggested. Unless it has a little dart dagger mark next to it, then if it has a little dagger mark next to it, when you take your rest, you always automatically learn this spell and it cannot be replaced so at second level we suggest disown it whispers and healing word but too bad if you don't want to take sick healing word you have to because it has a mark next to it because now bards are always going to be healers so and whenever you take that long rest to switch out your first level spells Healing Word is automatically always there. You, you can't get rid of it. This happens to you again at 4th level with Lesser Restoration. It's a 2nd level spell. No matter what, you always learn Lesser Restoration. Why? Because I guess bards are now healers. And uh, um, because when you're studying your spell book, even if you try and learn another spell, you can't. You you. Physically cannot learn sub that that spell is just somehow pounded into your brain. This happens to you again at sixth level with mass healing word. Eighth level you get uh, greater invisibility. 
uh, 10th level, you are forced to learn legend lore. Um, and that's the end of it. All right, our subclasses. College of Lore. That's it. I guess that's the only one we get suggested. Uh, okay, so, so far... No major changes other than the inspiration is more versatile. Uh, bards still feel like sort of misplaced skill monkeys who are now forced to be backup healers. Jack of all trades has been moved to fifth level. Arcane spells are the only spells you have access to, and you're limited to a few arcane colleges. And, um, except there are certain spells you are forced to learn. So, yeah, um, then the only subclass they give us to playtest is the College of Lore. At third level, you get the bonus proficiencies. Uh, you gain three skill proficiencies. If you have already one of these, uh, you can change it out. So, Arcana, History, and Nature. If you already have one of these proficiencies, choose a skill proficiency you lack and gain that proficiency. Level 3, you get Cutting Word. You use how to use your wit supernaturally to distract, confuse, and otherwise sap the confidence and competence of others. And which basically allows you to spend a Bardic Inspiration Point to make somebody reduce a dice roll. At 6th level, you get Cunning Inspiration. Which means now when you use your Bardic Inspiration, instead of rolling once, they can roll twice. At 10th level, you get improved Cutting Words. You now deal Psychic Damage to the creature equal to the number rolled on the Bardic Inspiration dice plus your Chrism Modifier. So not only is the individual going to um, take a minus to their dice roll, you also insult them. Wouldn't it just be easier to say, if I use my Cutting Word, they, guess they get disadvantage? And then my improved cutting word is they get dis disadvantage and, I don't know, take a d6 damage. Is that too confusing? I mean, it's no more confusing than subtract a number from your dice roll DM. Oh, subtract that number from your dice roll DM and your bad guy takes four points of damage. No saving throw. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would just say cutting word, disadvantage. Improve cutting word, disadvantage, and something else. Or get rid of it. I don't know. And at 14th level, you get peerless skill. If you if you make an ability check and fail, you can expand one use of your bardic inspiration roll and add the number to your ability check, which I could do before. Oh, now I get to add it to myself. And before, I only could give it to other people. Yes, uh, remember, the bardic inspiration up to now you could only give to other people. You could never give it to yourself. All right. Um, that's that's the bard. Mm. Oh, it looks like they've changed some, the feats up. Um, spell list looks pretty much the same. We'll go over that. Um... Uh, Eventually, we have some new rules, which we'll go over. Uh, they have this new thing called Epic Boon. What is the Epic Boon, though? It doesn't say. In 20th level, I get an Epic Boon. What is my Epic Boon? Okay, a big thing seems to be that all the the classes in the expertise bank at second level get expertise. Or first level. Well, they get they get expertise, which lets you choose skills and stuff that, you know, expertise in two of your skill proficiencies of your choice. Uh, if you don't know what expertise is, basically it doubles your weapon proficiency. I mean, your non-weapon proficiency. So instead of being at plus two, it's plus four. All right, what is, my, what is this epic boon thing? 20th level, I get an epic boon or 
or of luck feat or another epic boon feat of your choice. What are my epic boon feats? Guess that's in the feet section. Let's see. Epic boon of combat prowess. Epic boon of dimensional travel. Epic boon of energy resistance. Epic boon of fortitude. Epic boon of irresistible offense. Epic boon of luck. Epic boon of night spirit. Epic boon of peerless aim. Epic boon of recovery. Epic boon of skill proficiency. Epic boon of speed. Epic blah, 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 blah. Epic boon of undetectability. Epic Boon of Unfettered. Uh, let's see. So Epic Boon of Luck. Immediately after you roll a d20, you can roll a d10 and add the number rolled to your test. Once you use this benefit, you can't use it again until you roll initiative or finish a short or long rest. Until you roll initiative or finish a short or long rest. So I get in a fight. I can use my Epic Boon to add d10 to my next roll. And then the set... Once the next fight starts, I can do that again, or I could take a short rest and do that again. But I can only do it once, as opposed to a number of times equal to my proficiency bonus, which at 20th level would be what? Plus five? Plus six? So I could use it six times, or I could use it once, and then just wait for the next fight and use it again. I guess it kind of sounds epic, but not really. So far, I'm, I mean, it, it, the bar doesn't really feel anything different. Uh, a few level changes. Um, people are probably going to play the bar the same way. I'm sure a lot of people are going to complain about the fact that I have a spell forced on me, which makes no logical sense. And no matter what I do, I cannot not learn that spell. Other, unless, you know, the DM lets me. And, oh yeah, the feet thing. Hey, guess what? You could now do something you could do before. But now it's official. Even though it was always official. I'm Jeremy Crawford. I do your thinking for you. What do we think of the bard so far? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I mean, doesn't feel that different. I miss the old bard. Anybody remember the old bard? The original bard? Five levels of fighter. Five levels of thief one level of caster, and then you were this kick-ass bard? You're like, yeah, I survived five levels of fighter, five levels of thief, and one level of a caster, and now I could just do some amazing shit, as well as just being a horny, you know, guy who will fuck anything that moves. Excuse my language. Support me, Soda! All right, that's the bard. We're going to do another one on the ranger, and then do another one on the rogue, and we will continue through the playtest, but I don't want to waste too much time on each of these, because otherwise we'd be doing this all day. Link down below if you have D&D Beyond. Let me know what you think. Do you find the changes to the bard to be insulting? Do you find the changes to be of the bard to be problematic? Do you, do you actually like the changes to the bard? Do you think they should just get rid of the bard class since nobody takes it seriously anyways and they've never done it right? Personally, you've wizard, the TSR original bard was awesome. Once you made it a class and just made it this sort of, you know, if it's going to be a jack-of-all-trades class, Make it the jack of all trades class. If it's gonna be the entertainer, singer, party ins inspiration buff guy, then make that its thing. It, the bard has always been a mess since it became a class, and it's always, you know, stereotyped as the exact same thing. So, I mean, you've made a few changes. Other than that, it just feels like the same thing. I'm the OGGM. If you appreciate some nonsense, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Also, consider supporting me by checking out my loot over at teespring.com. And hopefully, if I can figure out, I will have a product up on Biggest Geekus Emporium or Drive Through by the end of the day. Uh, but yeah. Till next time. Get off my land, you damn bard. <laughs>